Welcome to Social Ella Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. 1 Corinthians 13.9 states, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. As a result of on that, receiving and relaying a prophetic message, it takes responsibility. You have to truly know what the Spirit of the Lord is telling you, and also what you're authorized to release. And when we're going to take a look at Zechariah chapter four to discuss some of the final points regarding releasing a prophetic message. But the first part is receiving that message. And no matter how many times you receive a prophetic message, and especially if it comes in a visual form, do not assume that just because you see something that it always has the same meaning. Yes, there are things that the Lord may use, and when you look at it. By comparing it to scriptures, it is going to mean the same thing. But don't always assume that a particular thing always means the same thing. I won't cover it in this in this um, presentation. But there are also times when people have false dreams and false visions. So again, please do not make assumptions. And we see a very good example of this in. Zechariah chapter 4. And one thing to note about Zechariah chapter 4 is there are times when people isolate things. But a dream or a vision may come and it may have transitions. And each transition indicates something that's different. It may be different messages for possibly different people. So even though I'm just going to isolate Zechariah 4, I want you to know that the same message continues through Zechariah chapter five, chapters five and six. And it's one of those things. When you receive a message, I call it you have to pan and zoom. You can't just look at one isolated thing. Some more of that later. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. And said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side, correction, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? So here we have an angelic visitation. That may not be the case for you. Maybe the Lord will show you something in a dream or in a vision. And there may not be anyone speaking to you in that dream or vision. All you do is that you see. Notice how Zechariah gave details. Seven candlesticks, seven lampstands, seven pipes, all those details. So when I mentioned earlier about panning and zooming, if it's a dream, once you wake up from that dream, think about the dreams. Like, go back. If you had a dream about a room, recall, try to recall everything you saw in that room and write the details down. When I mentioned about panning and zooming, sometimes you have to zoom in and focus on certain things get the micro picture. However, do not get so focused on the minute details that you miss the big picture. Also, do not be so focused on the big picture that you miss the minor details. Zechariah was very detailed about things. Also in getting the details, it is very beneficial to write things down because there are times when the Lord, he may just give you a dream and it has one scene or a vision that only has one scene. But from that, there are things that he will reveal to you at later dates that all relate to that one dream, that one vision, that one visitation, whatsoever the case may be. And by writing it down, it allows you to remember the details. And it continues. So I spake, so I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? That is very important. Zechariah did not make any assumptions. There are times when the Spirit of the Lord 
the Holy Spirit of the Lord will reveal things directly to you. And you don't need to ask any questions. But if you do not get those kind of answers immediately, inquire of the Lord and wait for him to answer. Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Even if you think you know what it means, do not make assumptions. Many people miss the mark when it comes to delivering prophecies because they make assumptions. God does not lie. God never misses the mark. But if a person makes assumption, then they risk missing the mark. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. That's also another thing. You may receive a message, but who is it for? In this case, the angel was letting him know it was for Zerubbabel. Saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So when you look about the dream with the or the vision with the candlesticks, seven lamps, olive trees, even though you have all those details, it was a simple message, or at least that part of it. This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. There are times when the Lord will give you a lot of information, but it doesn't mean that everything that he gives you is what you need to share with others. So it continues. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel shall thou become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. All that that the angel told um, Zechariah, it may not have made sense to him. But in delivering that message to Zerubbabel, it will make sense. So there are times, if you're the messenger, you may understand what you're saying to the individual, but if it's a true message from the Lord, when you relate it to that person, he or she will understand. In some cases, the individual will break down crying. Sometimes tears of joy because you are the messenger the Lord has sent to answer a person's prayers. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And that is good. That, those are words of comfort to Zerubbabel to know that what he started, that he'll be the one to finish it. The Lord has declared it, so it will come to pass. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts had sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet hand of Zerubbabel with those seven, which are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the old earth. So start giving more information about the seven, which are the seven eyes of the Lord, which go to and fro in the old earth. Then I answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right, right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? So there was something else that stood out in the vision to Zechariah. So he inquired of the Lord. But like I said, there are times when the Lord will show you a lot of things in a dream or a vision and may only reveal a part of it to you. And if you want to know more, you have to ask. And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? Also in... Um, the angel delivered the initial message about not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. The oil that fueled the lamps, a lot of times oil is used to indica indicate the Holy Spirit. So 
When it says not by might nor by power, it meant Zerubbabel would not be able to do those things by his own, but with the power of the Holy Spirit he would be. And we truly have to remember that, that the things we do is not by our might, it's not by our power, is the cause of the Holy Spirit. And that includes when we evangelize to others. It is not by might, no, nor by our power, not our seductive words, not our knowledge of the gospel, it is the Holy Spirit. So um, Zechariah had to ask the angel twice in order to get the revelation. So, and he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. And that is a very good thing. I mean, even if you have an idea, again, it is best for the Holy Spirit of the Lord to tell you what something is. Now, there are times when the Lord will hide certain things. And let me read a scripture for you. This is an unscheduled stop, but um, it just came to mind. Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. Again, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. There are times when the Lord, he will communicate something to you. You may not be sure what it is, but especially if you have a knowledge of scriptures, you will have an idea of what the Lord is communicating. And it's not to say that, for example, you're going to have maybe a dream or a vision that someone else in the Bible had, but you may see some things that are similar and you'll be able to figure it out. For an example, the Pharaoh of Egypt had two dreams that were very similar. They spoke about one subject. A famine that was going to occur after a feast. So there's going to be seven years of feast, seven years of famine. Joseph said that the reason why the Pharaoh had two similar dreams in one night was because the Lord had firmly established the matter and was going to bring it to pass soon. So if you have a dream, you know what it means. You fall asleep again and you have a similar dream and you know what it means and they both mean the same thing then falling in with the logic of the Lord. If you have those two revelations so close together, then it should mean that the Lord has firmly decided and is about to bring it to pass soon. Now, there are some people, they will do um, divination. That is different. But you, we ought to use the Bible to help interpret dreams and visions. But there are some things that the Lord will keep sealed, keep hidden from you, Regardless how hard you search for a season until the appointed time. Which is part of the reason why I say it is very important to write these things down. So again, in verse 13, And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. And I could go to the book of Revelation to speak about those two anointed ones. But that's a teaching for another time. So to recap, the angel from the Lord gave Zechariah a vision. The vision had many things in there. Some things were for one season. Other things were for another season. So the seven candlesticks seven lampstand and oil, that was for Zerubbabel, to let him know, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Then the two olive trees, those were for an end time prophecy, the two anointed ones. That's an example of a vision that required an interpretation. In some cases, you will not require an interpretation. And it's actually safe for you to give 
everything that you saw or relate things exactly how you saw it because it has a literal meaning. An example of this is in 1 Kings 22 when the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, was with the king of Israel, Ahab. And Ahab had 400 prophets who prophesied that it would be safe and that the kings would be victorious if they went to battle against a mutual enemy at Ramoth Gilead. And this will happen when they sent for another prophet, Micaiah, who was a true prophet of the Lord. So in 1 Kings um, 22, starting in verse 15. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into thine hand, into the hand of the king. The prophet was actually being deceptive, but a part of that is the king was going to go into battle anyhow, and he was going to die. Also, Ahab had his prophets who told him what he wanted to hear. So Ahab wasn't truly seeking the truth, or he wasn't seeking the truth. He wanted those ear-tickling messages. In fact, when the messenger went to get Micaiah, the messenger was telling Micaiah to basically tell the king what he wanted to hear. There are times you want a false prophet, the Lord will give you a false prophet. But Micaiah, he wasn't a false prophet. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? Ahab said that. He didn't really want to hear what the Lord had to say because Ahab was an evil king. Because one of the things Ahab had said before Micaiah showed up was that Micaiah never prophesied anything good about him. If there isn't if there isn't anything good about, to prophesy about a person, then he can't prophesy anything good about them. And it continues. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy no good concerning me but evil? So again, Micaiah initially told him what he did because Ahab did not want to hear the truth. He wanted a feel-good message. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he should go and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit, that, and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of Chenaniah, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into the inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the sons, or correction, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in prison and feed him with the bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of thee. 
So Micaiah, he actually told the king the exact vision that he saw. God in his throne, all the heavenly host to his right and left. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to lead Ahab into battle so that he would perish. And a spirit became a lying spirit in the mouths of his prophets. They were all deceived. They deceived him. And in part because he wanted to hear that he was going to be victorious. Again, if you want a false prophet, you'll get a false prophet. But sticking with the message. So Micaiah told him exactly what he saw, what he heard, and it was up to Ahab and even Jehoshaphat to respond accordingly. And at the very beginning, or the very end, this is important. If you're going to prophesy to someone and you feel absolutely sure that that message is from the Lord, that is for the person or those individuals, and you are going to release it. Please remember the things in the Lord said in Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22, because what you declare must come to pass. I start off by saying we know in part and we prophesy in part, but the part you prophesy must come to pass in order for it to be from the Lord. And that is why Micaiah said, after letting Ahab know that he was going to perish, the Lord hath not spoken by me. Or correction. If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. When you declare a thing in the name of the Lord, it must come to pass unless there is a call for repentance. Again, you receive a revelation from the Lord. It is very important to write it down. In some cases, you may have to pray more about it. The Lord may have you hold on to something for a while, and if you wait a little bit longer, he will actually reveal a little bit more to you. Similarly to in um, Zechariah 4, and go look at that. Similar to in Zechariah 4, where Zechariah received a revelation, and then he asked about what the two olive trees meant. There are times when you truly, as the saying goes, press into the Lord for more information. We know in part, we prophesy in part, but the parts we prophesy must come to pass unless there is a provision for repentance or there are conditions associated with a prophecy that is stated up front. Also, in addition to writing things down, remember, pan and zoom. Write down the information as soon as you get it. Sometimes if you hold on to it too long, you start forgetting things. You start forgetting those details. And those details may be very important. Pan and zoom. Look around. Look at different objects. Get a small picture, so to speak. Pull back. Look at the big picture. Because there are times when you may say something, or for example, the Lord may give you a vision or a dream and it applies to you, but you may overlook something and it may cost you. And lastly, I mentioned about what is written in Zechariah 4. It continues in chapters 5 and 6. So there are times when the Lord will make transitions. It could be a continuation of the same subject or maybe something that applies to a different person, different time period, etc. Also record things based on those transitions. Put them in paragraphs. I hope this helps. We know in part, we prophesy in part, but the part you prophesy must come to pass.